Hey, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR. I'd like to say hello to all of our friends in Minnesota. Minnesota, you are looking at a pretty high level of change, but there are good parts here. There is good news and there are serious opportunities coming up for Minnesota. We got to talk about some emerging threats, some big challenges. The future for Minnesota is going to be very different from the past, but it doesn't have to be a bad future. I know a lot of people have been waiting on this forecast, so let's get into it. First, we'll talk about heat waves. You might know that potentially deadly heat waves are a big threat in the forecast for the Midwest. Here's the good news, no threat to you, Minnesota. So the federal government is projecting that by 2050, the once a decade type heat waves, disaster heat waves, will be 13 degrees over current highs and last for five days. So with your current highs in the low 80s towards the southern edge of the state and the 70s towards the northern edge, you're likely to stay well and safely below 100 degrees during these projected big heat waves. Very good news, an emerging threat for many of the states, many of your neighboring states, but you, Minnesota, look to be safe. It doesn't mean you aren't facing a substantial summer heat up. Let's take a look over at our USDA heat map. So we're going to look at a big picture first on this one. Right now, Minnesota is in a, a fairly cool part of the country, right? But if we zoom out, and we look towards 2050 under the RCP 4.5 scenario, under a realistic scenario of reduced emissions, we can see this ton of heat is coming up through the middle of the country, impacting us as far as the Dakotas, and you are kind of getting sideswiped by it over in Minnesota. Let's go back, zoom in on the state, and look at what exactly those changes are going to mean for you. So right now, uh, with our contemporary data based on info collected from the 80s to 2009, we can see from these colors how many days you tend to have in the state over 86 degrees. Answer, unsurprisingly right now, not many. Down in the southern edge, you can get as a month and a half over 86. And in the northern forests, you expect a week or maybe less. And we go back to the mid-century under 4.5, and we see dramatic change. We see substantial change here, where these southern parts of the state, including the Twin Cities region, used to see a few weeks, maybe a month and a half. You're now looking at potentially three months of, uh, of warm summer temperatures. Up here in the northern forests, there is a little bit more hope here by this uh, northern shore of Lake Superior, we see good cool preservation. We see only a couple more weeks over here, a couple more weeks of warmth a year. And we have to hope that that's small enough to not stress out the trees too bad, to not stress out those cold weather uh, forests. But this is a big change. If we look back at contemporary data, you can see that this is a little bit more similar. Your projected climate is more similar to how Iowa is today. And we know that we have very different landscapes in Iowa today than we do in the Northern half of Minnesota. So it's, it's a hard change to wrap your head around and we'll come back to it more in a little bit. I want to take a second to get you the plant hardiness zone information so we can look at how these summer changes will line up with the winter changes before we make too many assumptions, before we put too much together. So this is our plant hardiness zone information. This is looking at historical data from the 80s to 2009. We see that in Minnesota, we have a lot of the rare zone three forests. Even today, the US doesn't have a lot of the zone three forest ban. And we see most of the state is zone four with some little bits of zone five. If we look towards mid-century, substantial changes in plant hardiness zones where that zone three forest band is retreating dramatically, pretty much to just around Lake of the Woods here. Um, the Twin Cities were expecting uh, to move up to uh, zone five from zone four in terms of uh, winter temperatures, substantially milder. And we notice a lot of milder temperatures around the lake. Let's uh, go back to contemporary. and mid-century. So you can see most of the state will be milder in the winter by a full plant hardiness zone. Most of the state is looking at very substantial change. When we think about the forests, there's pretty good lineup of the conserved zone three 
and a limited two week increase in summer around Lake of the Woods. So God willing, we have some potential for Northern forest conservation there. But in the areas where we see the zone shift from three to four in the winter, and we have more than two weeks of increased summer heat, I would be very concerned about the potential for mass tree death in your forests. For the forests to die for this mass tree death, that means that we have accompanying wildfire risk. The area in sort of south central Minnesota between Leech Lake and Brainerd, that I would say is emerging as a very serious fire risk area because of the change degree and the way that it's gonna put stress on the trees. I'm gonna talk more about wildfire in a minute, but I feel a need to get myself on a more positive note here. Let's take just a second and talk through what these changes mean for some of Minnesota's cities. Minneapolis and St. Paul, they're gonna be much more like Des Moines is today by 2050. Des Moines, it still is a cold winter, but it's a little easier for people who weren't born there to adjust to a zone five winter than a zone four winter. Your summers are also gonna be a lot more like Des Moines today. Des Moines right now, it's a growing city. It's a climate that people find fairly desirable or at least tolerable, and it will be a rarer climate by mid-century. I would anticipate significant growth opportunities for the Twin Cities in the next 30 years. And if you really wanna think about a place that's gonna be changing in the next 30 years, you need to check out Duluth. Anyone who really loves a cool summer or needs one for health conditions, they're gonna want a place in Duluth. It's one of the tiny handful of developed cities in America that will still have a cool summer. The winters are gonna be a lot milder there too, a full zone shift in mildness for the winter. So if you prefer living in a city and you have some flexibility, Minnesota is a good place to invest now. Very good urban outlook. Okay, back to wildfire and forests. You know, I wanted to point out there are some major real estate opportunities in Minnesota. I know plenty of you want watching, you wanna know that but you can probably tell I, I care about the forests, you know, and in my heart, we know they're facing big challenges. We've seen the wildfires start. There was that big fire in the Boundary Waters just last summer in 2021. And we can see on those projection maps that although the Boundary Waters area won't be as vulnerable as that Leech Lake to Brainerd area that I just highlighted, the Boundary Waters will also be more vulnerable to tree death and fires as we approach mid-century. To protect the northern forests, we're going to need to experiment with new types of active management. You're going to want to check out the USDA tree atlas. I'll put the link in the video description to see what kind of new species the Forest Service recommends moving in. These northern forests are well studied. We have many tribal authorities in the area with valuable knowledge for how to care for them. There's hope we can preserve some of the forest much as it is particularly in that climate conservation zone we've highlighted by the northern center of the border. And to care for the rest of the forests that are going to be threatened by the changes, we will need supportive planting of new species. Zone 4 forest is going to be increasingly rare and precious for the future of America. In Minnesota, we'll have the majority of suitable zone 4 forest habitat. Forestry work is going to be very important for the future of the state both for the benefit of the forests themselves and all their living things and for human needs. If we're gonna have wood to harvest, you can see yourself how that Northern hardwood habitat is shrinking dramatically in the next 20 to 30 years. On the topic of your wonderful natural resources in Minnesota, let's take a look at the Great Lakes. The changes in the Great Lakes are, are of great interest to all of us. We can see that in Lake uh, Superior here, we have had some loss of ice cover durations over the last 30, 40 years, where we are losing about two days of ice cover. Fortunately, by Minnesota, we currently don't see a trend in summer surface water temperatures, but we know that Lake Superior as a whole is experiencing some increases. So thinking about that warming trend in Lake Superior, and all of the cold water fish that live there, which not only are a lot of them great sport fish, they're really good fish to eat. They're a commercially valuable fish. We can see that in a typical year, during that warm period where the water has absorbed the heat of the summer, that actually drives the oxygen content down. This bottom bar here shows the oxygen content. And we can see that that creates a narrower band where the fish are able to live, where it's cold enough and oxygenated enough for them to live. 
So if we think about the future, if we think about a dramatically longer summer, if we think about higher temperatures, that could squeeze the fish out. In just one real bad year, they could get squeezed out. No zone that's cold enough for them to live with enough oxygen, we'd lose the stock. This is a scary future to think about. I think it's crucially important that we realize if we stay on the 4.5 pathway, it's unlikely. It's not likely to happen. We're likely to keep the fish if we can manage to stay on a pathway with even moderate reduction of emissions. We have an opportunity, those of us in the Midwest, to, produce, to preserve much more of our culture, our food traditions, than many of our countrymen who live near the sea. The Great Lakes are looking at much less change than the sea. We got to stay on track. We got to stay on RCP 4.5. And we don't have to have that nightmare future happen. We can keep our fish. We can keep our, our way of life, our cultural touch points. Other people don't have the advantages we have on this front. So let's take a minute. This is a lot of information. The changes for Minnesota are really big. It's going to feel quite different in almost all of the state by mid-century. There's a lot of hope. There's hope we can preserve some of those special northern forests, those moss carpeted forests. There's hope we can preserve our cold water fish. It's justifiable hope. There are many areas in Minnesota, however, where preservation of the current landscape will not be possible. If you're going to be successful, you're going to need to roll with the punches. The changes are going to be in substantial changes, but you're in an area where the changes will, in many cases, make the land more agriculturally productive. In many areas, the changes are likely to increase your property values. There will be more of a demand for Minnesota real estate. And these changes are big. You know, I can see why anyone would be scared trying to take them in for the first time. The summer and winter maps, they freaked me out when I first saw them because the scale of the change is so enormous. But take some time to process it. If you can get on top of it, the changes can be good for you. When I see opportunities for change, there are often opportunities that are going to require being pretty quick. Not everyone's going to have time to pull a plan together. In Minnesota, I think the change opportunities will be easier for a typical person to grab hold of. I think we'll have pretty clear change models for both the agricultural areas and in the cities. There's a lot of work to do. We're going to desperately need new models for forestry in the north to help our great northern forests survive these changes. But man, if I've seen one state so far where there are fortunes to be made, a future of prosperity for your normal person, just a normal person, just a person who wants to work hard and be a good member of their community, a person who doesn't have an appetite for a super high level of risk, if I were to call the best state for an average person to make their best bet, from all I've learned so far, I'd call it here. I think Minnesota has just tremendous potential, a, a huge upwelling of opportunity. And you all are very resilient in Minnesota. You have good cultural resilience, and you already have a lot of infrastructure and practices in place to help you resist extreme storms. You have good weather resilience kind of built into your system. You're holding a strong hand. I'm rooting for you. If you want my advice, whatever property you own in Minnesota that you can hold, you should hold on to it. This is Dr. Sherman with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe and help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming and we can maximize the positive in these changes. Let's get ready.